Welcome to Linux in a Shell, episode 13, Top of Top. My name is Dan Washko. I will be your host today. And as you can see, I'm currently running top on the uh, screen session that we're recording right now. Now, for a little bit of information, um, this is going to be a multi-part episode. And today I'm just going to be talking about the top part of top, which I'll cover in just a minute. And remember that this is more of an overview and an example and a supplement to the website, so I recommend that you head on over to linuxinashell.org, look up episode 13, and read the full write-up and listen to the audio to get the big picture of top instead of just looking at these examples. So I'm going to focus on the top of top, which is this section right here. Uh, the first five lines that you see when you start top. Now you'll notice that there's some action going along here uh, as it as it runs um, and that's because top refreshes itself by default every three seconds. Now I can change that okay by using a a command. So I press Q to quit out of top and let's say top D let's change it to, to 10 seconds now, yeah, 10 seconds. So you'll notice now, as we wait for this to refresh in 10 seconds, uh, which is a little bit of a long shot here, but you'll see. 10 seconds, there it is, it refreshed. But we want something a little faster. Uh, you could actually do top at one second, and it goes every one second, refreshes itself, and that's probably just a little too fast. Now, you could actually do top D, and the format is... is uh, second second tenths tenths of a second so I can do 2.5 seconds and that's just a little f faster than three but you get the picture there uh, I don't you can't change the uh, the refresh on the fly as far as I can tell you actually have to start it with the refresh rate that you want so if I were to do a refresh rate of two I can also pass an n dash n which is a number of iterations so if I do five it'll refresh five times and quit so watch there's one two three four five I should have counted the first one as the uh, as as the first iteration so it one two three four it showed you five iterations there um, so the first second third fourth it actually refreshed four times but it counted the first one as the first iteration uh, so let's just go back to the default view of top now some of the other commands you can see is if you uh, if you hit the H key it takes you into a help section and you'll see right here uh, it tells you what's highlighted is is some of the values that are currently running um, but right now, uh, you can see what I'm focusing on is these values right here. LTM, it toggles off load average task and memory information. So we're going to focus on just these three, these two right here. And I'll show you what I mean. I can hit uh, any other key to continue, go back there. So if I type in L, it's going to remove this top line. I won't see it anymore. So L toggles that off. T is for the CPU tasks. It toggles those two lines off. So you can see those right there. And then M toggles the memory information off. Just right there. What else I want to say about this before I just talk about some of these values in here is right now it's showing one CPU or one line of CPUs and that's the aggregate total of my all my CPUs in the system this is a dual core system so I have two CPUs in there if I press the one key it shows me my total CPUs uh, broken out on separate lines so if it, that'll toggle off hitting one we'll toggle that on and off now there's also another option here is IRIX mode which is on by default IRIX mode can be toggled on to Solaris mode by pressing the I. It says IRIS mode off, which is now called Solaris mode. Toggle it all again, IRIX mode on. Now it's on by default. What that does is, when you look at the values in, in uh, IRIX mode as compared to the non-IRIX mode or Solaris mode, you have to realize that what you're going to see 
in this line here is is based on a hundred percent of your CPUs. So if you're looking at a value of let's say there was 20 in here for uh, user processes, a nice user uh, processes, 20% would be 20% of four CP of both CPUs. So it'd be 20% of 200 is being used. Whereas if I saw 20% in non irix mode, it would be 20% of one CPU being utilized right there. So it it, it would it would show me uh, the 20% of the overall system is 100% being both CPUs. Whereas in irix mode, it's considered can go up to like 200%. So if you had a quad core system, it could go show 400%. So be aware of that. Now, let's just show you some of the values here. Let me actually get some stuff going. I'll, I'll fire up a, a screensaver here, and you can see some values going up. Uh, I like Ant. Uh, let's go with Ant Maze. And I'll pull it over here so you can see what's going on. Ooh, Ant Maze. And that has, you know, produce some load on the system. You can see right here, CPU 1 is, 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 they're both fluctuating, goes up to 32.5%, and you can see values increasing up here across the different CPUs. I have IRX mode on now, so you can see now this is uh, a value of, of my entire system. My CPU is 100%, whereas if I change it to 1, that's going to show you uh, the percentage across both CPUs at the same time as, as a 200%. Whereas if I toggle IRX mode on, off, it shows me based upon 100% of CPU usage. It's kind of hard to, to see that, and it's not a one-to-one -one comparison that makes it easy. So let me, let me add another thing on here. Let's do this. I'm going to cat a virtual machine file to just a test file to get some other process going on so you can see some values really going on into this system. Up at the top you have uh, load time or load information, CPU load average, the, the current time of the system, how long it's been up, 38 minutes, how many users are logged in, the load average uh, on the system, we talked about this in the free command, this is a one minute, five minute, 15 minute load average, you can see right here this is spiking up to 1.71 1 per uh, value here. Now this is a, remember this is a dual core system so it's out of two CPUs I'm getting close to maxing out my CPU or my load average that the system can handle uh, and of course it's because I'm running stuff that I don't normally run. Now this is uh, uh, spiking up there pretty fast so uh, I'm running out of system resources for the tasks that I'm running. I have a total of 108 tasks running here. This is listening tasks. Three are actually running. 106 are sleeping, and I have one zombie task that's going on right now. Uh, for understanding a zombie task, make sure you check out the write-up on the website. And of course, we've got CPU. There, this is the first line, is uh, user processes that have not been niced. And what that basically means is uh, I haven't adjusted the usage of uh, the, the nice level of any of those prof processes. Then there's system, and that's uh, what's being utilized by the kernel uh, system processes running, the percent, uh, percentage CPU process there. Then I have nice process, user processes that are running a nice level, and there aren't any there. Uh, my percentage of idle, how much of the system is idle. Uh, how much of the system is waiting for I.O. completion, input-output completion is the W.A. Uh, how much is waiting for hardware interrupts, how much is waiting for software interrupts, and how much is stolen from a virtual machine, which of course is zero because I'm not running a virtual machine right now, this inside a virtual machine. So you notice that what this process is doing here, this cat command is doing a lot of writing, so it's doing a lot of input-output. If I killed that process right there and I go back to top, we should start to see that the uh, weight goes down dramatically. It also, uh, so it, it reduced that. Now a lot of idle system load has gone down. Uh, and finally, we have memory usage right here. The total memory in kilobytes, how much is being used, how much is free, how much is being used by cache buffers, swap information, how much is being used there. Remember, uh, this looks like it's skyrocketing up there using a lot of memory. That's not necessarily the case because I got a lot of 
buffer cache uh, for a complete understanding of that look at the website check out the free command that I did uh, on episode 8 or 9 uh, so check that out for a full understanding of those values in there. Now you see that uh, there's still a zombie process there. I think this might be from the ant maze. So if I kill the ant maze, go back to top and see if it refreshes. Uh, now, so I wonder, wonder what that zombie process is. Well, anyway, one other thing I want to show you is uh, any stopped processes. So what I can do here is, if, for instance, if I were to do, let's see, uh, well, let's let's go back here. I think I can do a stop process here. Let's bring up the ant maze again, and we'll do a Control Z to stop it. Oh wow, look at that! It actually stopped stop that there but it left it open and you can see now top will report that there is one stop process if I do a foreground percent one to bring it back to life look over here at top and it shows that there's no more stop process so that's pretty cool I'm wondering what that zombie process is so I'm kinda of getting off track here on what I want to do but let's uh, let's check that out Um, I wonder what's showing me what's a zombie process. Well, I'll get, I'll, I'll figure that out and uh, replicate that again for next time. Discover that because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself in, in mucking around with the uh, different processes there. So again, this has been uh, Linux in a Shell, episode 13, just talking about the top of top. Head on over to the website to check out the write-up and cover out what a lot of this stuff means in more detail and and uh thank you very much and thanks hacker public radio and have a great day